Just to put it in perspective, uh, because I think the gentleman from California did tee it up pretty well, but today the federal government in its, all of its programs, including Medicare, Social Security, and so on, consumes a greater portion of our gross domestic product than ever before. Isn't that accurate? That, that's correct. So government has grown in the size and amount of money that it takes in. So in a nutshell, is it fair to say that if we're getting more money as a percentage of the total wealth of the country, we have no one to blame if we don't have enough money for vital programs than ourselves? That's true. Um, but I'm going to go back to something you said. I'm not trying to hold you accountable, but I know a little bit about what you, you try to do. How many slots do you have today, and how many of them have you been able to fill because of limited resources? Uh, we have, uh, we don't have a set number of slots. But you but used to have a lot more full-time equivalent. Oh, yes. Yes, we did. We, we uh, most recently, uh, we had about 3,250 before the sequester. We've been under 3,000 people uh, most recently. So, so the IRS isn't the only group that's being told to do more with less and, and leverage technology, are they? That's correct. And we think, just for the record, on the IRS, that they could do more with the resources they have. We don't think they've measured good return on investment about different enforcement strategies and allocated the resources. Uh, and isn't it true, if you know, that the IRS has done very little to deal with the kind of fraud that has become rampant, where people, through identity theft, basically file your tax return quickly and get and get a return from the government? That's that's a growing industry, isn't it? It's a growing industry, but they have taken some some measures. We give them credit for it in this report, and also the Congress for giving them additional legislation to get the W-2 information from employers earlier, which will help them match. Uh, pre previously, people could file their returns and they didn't have the W-2s. Right. In the old days, a quick filer comes in early January and just defrauds and gets away with it. It's yeah. a little harder now. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to one of the areas that you note. It's a new area. You, you have a fairly broad group of problems for Native Americans. Yes. Uh, and this is new. Uh, education is failing on, uh, we, the federal government, are failing in our responsibility to bring education to uh, the tribal areas, correct? That's correct. And Indian health care. the condition of the schools. Right. Uh, Indian health care service is not meeting its responsibilities. Is that true? That's correct. And when in Native American tribes try to do energy programs, energy development programs, you noted that they're finding extreme burdens in trying to do their own programs on Native American land. Yes. So first time, but it looks like there's an attack on Native Americans on three fronts, their education, their opportunity of energy and employment, and of course their health. How are we going to fix this? I think you need better leadership over at the Bureau of Indian Affairs and Indian Health Services. It has to be a higher priority. When I meet with the new Secretary of Interior, once there is one, I'm going to raise this issue to them. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a serious problem. Uh, staffing isn't uh, up to where it needs to be at a lot of these locations. There are no health care standards uh, and metrics that they're supposed to have. They're still allocating the money for contract care, for health care, using a formula they used in the 1930s. I mean, it just, I mean, it's just it, lack of attention would be the underlying theme, Congressman Issa, that I would think. So this, is, we, this is, we put on the list to elevate attention to it. It needs right. leadership commitment. And, and that leadership failure is, in fact, at the Department of Interior. They, they've gotten to where you now see three separate parts of, of our dealing with our obligation for these tribal lands uh, in a way in which it's got to be almost job one of the Secretary of Interior to find himself some key lieutenants and put them to work. Yeah, exactly. And the uh, Department of Health and Human Services has a role here, too. Well, they do have a secretary now, so that's a... I, I plan to meet with Secretary Price. Well, uh, I plan to meet with him on this issue, too, because okay. uh, California, as you know, has a fairly extensive amount of Native American uh, assets. Uh, you've been doing this for a long time, and I did note that you're doing more with less. Uh, but in the remaining seconds, just tell me, if you could have one thing from this committee, one thing to make your job easier and more successful, what would it be? We'll leave money aside. <laughs> uh, I, I, 
attention and more hearings on the high-risk areas? Well, I look forward to that. Uh, I might add one that I hoped you would say, but I didn't prep you, and that is the type of interference that you've had from previous executive branch where they found you a nuisance, they argued over what your statutory authority was, and denied you access. Would that also be something you'd put high on the list? Oh, definitely. Uh, I'll be on your doorstep right away if there's a problem. Well, Mr. Chairman, it is I ask that question for a reason. I know Will's going to be next, but uh, the last administration, I think, failed, and it is our obligation to hold this administration to a much higher standard to cooperate with the GAO because without them, our oversight is not meaningful. Thank you. I yield back.